All right, guys, so wrapping up my 300 blackout ballistic gel block test set of videos uh, with the Hornady 190 grain sub X bullet here. And uh, here's a look at this. It's got that plastic tip in it. Uh, this is a, a lead core bullet with a full uh, copper jacket on it and uh, boat tail. And, you know, this is also. Well, it was intended to be a sub-loading. Uh, I think my velocity's come out a little faster on this one as well. But uh, let's turn around here and take a look at the loading real quick, and then we'll get into the video. All right, so no big surprise. CCI uh, number 400 small rifle primers and Hodgson little gunpowder and uh, Starline brass. I mean, uh, you know, when you got a good thing, why change it up? So the only big difference here from some of the previous loadings is uh, there's the bullet, the Hornady Sub X, 30 cal, 190 grain, uh, 308 caliber. And uh, let's, uh, let's get into the video, guys, and see what you think. All right, guys, so this next round is actually going to be a little bit of a challenge, uh, and I may end up putting these in the same video. This is the, uh, the Hornady 190 grain Sub X, and... We just got done shooting the Lehigh Defense Max Expansion Bullet. So I'm curious now to see how this Hornady Bullet stacks up against this Lehigh Defense Bullet. Uh, four grains heavier, and the velocities, we'll have to see what the velocity comes out on this one as well. Uh, I'm not shot this, so I don't know what the velocity is gonna be. So uh, assuming we get similar velocities, you know, we'll be able to actually put these things side by side here in a few minutes and, and get a a good look at, at how each one of them is performing. I do have the Garmin reset already. So we should be ready to go. That was, uh, seems like I was getting better Garmin readings shooting kind of over top of it versus beside of it. So let's see here. And I did get a velocity. Uh, this one's also a little faster than sub at 1114. It's not as fast as the Lehigh Defense, but uh, let's go see what it did. All right, so loon track is here. It's kind of behind the Lehigh defense track. Let's see if we can see it from the top. Okay, so there it is. It tracks right on down. And uh, <clears throat> all right, here we go, guys. So. This is the Hornady Sub X. I have the ballistic tip and the bullet. Um, I don't see, I don't really see any fragments back through there, but uh, this bullet is just a mess. As you can see there, I've got jacket peeled back. I've got lead. Uh, looks like we did shed just a little piece of lead right before the ballistic tip there. So, but we did get a few more inches of penetration. Looks like total penetration is about 22 and a half inches. But with that ballistic tip there, it looks to me like this bullet flipped and has ran backwards for the bulk of its run down through here. Uh, I don't have a good wound track. Looks like whatever happened, happened right here pretty close to the beginning. I don't really see where it flipped over backwards. Or maybe it just hit backwards. So anyway, let's, uh, let's do another one and see what we get with the second one. All right, guys, so... Uh... Here we go with round two of the 190 grain Hornady Sub X bullet. All right, 
So we did get a velocity this time. 11, 14, standard deviation. No, I'm sorry. We did not get a velocity. It's only showing one shot. So no velocity on that one, but we did get a catch. Let me, uh, let me put a couple of these into the backstop down there. Let's see if we can get this velocity dialed in here a little bit better. So that's three shots on the chronograph. All right guys, let's see what this one did. All right guys, so here's the Hornady 190 grain sub X bullets. I uh, did recover them. The ballistic tips, um, uh, they were rubbery and actually broken up into pieces. And there are some fragments of lead left in here as well. I uh, was not able to manage to dig those out of the gel block. So uh, anyway, let's take a quick look at these again. So I'm really disappointed in these. I know these are running a little bit faster than sub velocities, but expansion, weight retention, uh, the, uh, the lead completely uh, peeled away from the, the copper jacketing. Got a little friend there checking it out. And, uh, you know, the jacket went one way, the lead went the other way. Both of these bullets turned backwards. And apparently when they did, the, uh, the pedals also folded back up into the bullet. The lead folded back in. Um, it was just... Uh, Nothing really typical at all. Uh, wound channel on the first one was not that impressive. A better wound channel on the second one up to where it flipped backwards and then after that it just took off. So, all right guys, we'll get these back and get some more pictures. Uh, like I said, chrono data will be coming up as a slide here at the end of the video, so stay tuned. All right guys, so I don't know about you guys, but I was uh, very disappointed at these results. I honestly expected much better results from Hornady's bullet on this. Uh, I weighed these out, recovered the polymer tip and weighed them with these. Uh, you saw from the slides <coughs> that the, uh, the, the unfired bullet was 190.8 grains. <coughs> and you saw the weights of, the, of these two. So we, we did have some Looks like some copper pedal and maybe some lead uh, weight loss on these. But most importantly, um, these didn't really expand and open up uh, like they were supposed to. Um, from from the, the gel pictures, you saw that these bullets went in eight or 10 inches. They opened up, uh, appeared to open up like they were supposed to, uh, and then tumbled over and continued on into the second gel block backwards. And that backwards force, uh, I'm sure, is what actually folded the pedals back closed. I mean, this one here, all but one pedal literally just kind of closed back up. And, yeah, you can see there, you know, sort of putting the polymer tip in there. If these had gone a little bit longer, they may have uh, gone back to their original firing. Nah, I'm just kidding. Anyway, but even at that, you know, this bullet did not change the diameter much at all. Uh, at some point, I'm sure it was opened up and a lot wider, but for the bulk of its travel, it was not. Now, like I said, these were traveling a little faster than subsonic. Did that factor into it? Possibly. Uh, I will also be changing these back out, the loading on this. I will be slowing this bullet back down and I will be putting this back in the gel block later once I get it down to uh, around a thousand foot per second. 
to see what it does. You know, maybe I was overdriving this. Uh, that's my question. Uh, if you guys have had any experience with these, I'd be glad to hear it. <clears throat> but uh, for right now, uh, of everything I shot into the gel block in this last set of six videos, this has been the most disappointing. Uh, you know, I'll say I got exactly what I was expecting out of the barns. Uh, exactly what I was expecting out of the Lehigh Defense, exactly what I was expecting out of the Nosler, and also for the Barry's Plated Bullets. But the Hornady, I was expecting uh, a, a much better a much better result in this. So, guys, definitely will be a follow-up video on this one, uh, and also slowing down the Lehigh Defense. So, uh, so at 11, 1140-some foot uh, per second on these, uh, I was pushing these about 80 foot per second faster than sub velocities, uh, as opposed to the, the, the Lehigh defense. Do you think this is enough velocity increase over subs to cause this bullet to over expand? Let's hear that in the comments. Like I said, I, I do plan on doing a follow up video with this. Uh, I first got these, when did he first come out with these? I, I, I went all in and I bought like three boxes of 190 grain and I think I've got a box or two of the 175 grain. Uh, so I, I will be working to get a good functioning bullet with this uh, out of both of those, those grain weights. Uh, so this is kind of concerning since I've got so many of these and it performs so poorly on this particular outing. So uh, like I said, we'd love to hear your comments uh, or questions. Uh, but I, I do plan on loading this down a little bit and trying to slow this down and get into that 1,000 to 1,060 foot per second node. Uh, this was a 16 inch barrel versus my 10 and a half inch. I don't think, uh, I don't think five and a half inches of barrel is gonna slow it down enough to get it back to sub velocities. Uh, either way, I want my sub loading to be a sub loading out of my 16 inch barrel. My so there is one bright spot uh, to this bullet, uh, going back and watching through the footage, um, it, it was pretty obvious that the temporary wound channel opened up quite a bit there uh, with both of these loads. Uh, I had a nice wound channel, uh, much larger in the hydrostatic effect uh, from the cavitation of this bullet going through uh, than, than what it appeared um, before I saw the videos down. And and I, I will give that to the to this this bullet from Hornady. Um, in the process of that bullet opening up, flipping around backwards, and then those pedals closing back up as it went through the first block, it did create uh, a, a fairly nice wound channel. So that that is a, a little bit of a saving grace uh, from the results on this test. But the, the final state of that bullet mechanically, because the lead and the copper bonding had, had come apart, uh, was still a little concerning. So all right guys, uh, as always, thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. And Matt from Kentucky Range Time, we'll catch you on the next one.